Hello everybody, this is Jeremy Mateo with In The Daw. Welcome back to another video. Today I want to talk about virtual guitarist Amber 2 from UJAM. Now, to really bring home this video, I wanted to do a comparison side by side between Amber 1 and Amber 2. Now, to my left is Amber 1, to the right is Amber 2. As you see, what they've done is they've essentially expanded the basic controls by adding this little divot here, giving us some different options while also taking away some of the ones that were less used or desirable, I guess, in their mindset. UGM has also flipped the controls where now the common phrases and style phrases are at the bottom, but you also now have the added benefit of being able to drag and drop MIDI, meaning that you're able to use the common phrases and style phrases as MIDI loops to be used in other instruments. And I think what we should do right now is just take a listen to Amber 1. So I have a basic, basic loop with Amber 1. We're gonna solo up this. So we'll get a basic loop. We'll do something like a slow groove. Pretty simple, right? And let's say we select a key, like we want to be in G, those same chords that were being used, F sharp minor, E major, will change. And this works with single notes as well. So if we go to B, the C4 is a B sus4, E, B sus4, D, C major, C sharp, and you know, it changes, it's really cool. Now we have latch control, which will allow us to just hit a note and it'll hold it indefinitely. We have speed control. As well as swing and feel. Now, our common phrases are right here. We're able to select from very simple variations of time uh, phrases. Right, pretty simple. As you can see in here, this was designed to be more of a performance tool. It's really cool. Now we have tonal controls, which is going to give us different mixes and sources. We have mic, pickup, mix, which is a blend of the both. It sounds really good. And then the split left and right. We have a shimmer control, which is a very aggressive, high frequency shelf. I personally don't really like it. And then we have position, which I believe is something like the positions of the microphones or something, but it definitely adds some type of phasing to it that will kind of shift the tonal characters. We have fret noise and low tuning to detune it, as well as doubling to make it stereo. We had a delay control, which is just a knob going up, and we can control our delay times right here, as well as a chorus a reverb and then our volume output. It was very simple, and let me just show you the main options that I ever use, which is the tone, source, and position. I'll show you shimmer too, but it's pretty simple. Cool. So that was Amber One. Interesting plugin. Really cool. Personally, this wasn't my favorite plugin. Uh, that is Silk. My favorite plugin is Silk uh, from UJAM. I love Silk. I want Virtual Guitarist Silk 2. I, I want it really badly. I had used Silk and Amber One, and I thought they were really cool plugins. Now, that is until you get Amber Two, and this is a preset, so I'm gonna make sure it's saved. We're gonna load up this preset that I've chosen. I'm gonna bring down the volume by two, by one more dB, so we wanna do negative 
2.1. And what I want to do is I want to be able to make this always come back here when we want to, right? Listen to this. And check this out. Do you hear how dynamic everything sounds? The playing sounds so realistic. Uh, you might hear a little bit of like pumping and that's just because I have a limiter on my output to make sure that I don't clip. But you're hearing really, really dynamic playing and, and you're actually able to see that there is not just a one bar loop, there is a two bar loop here. I mean, listening to that, the loop is definitely different. It's not just a super short loop. If we zoom in, we can see on my timeline that that's two bars. There's a two bar loop and it has a beginning, a middle and a conclusion. It's really cool. We also now have common phrases that give you actual names on what they have if you highlight them by hovering your mouse. Really cool. Now we still have these style options right here, which gives us a ton of different styles, but we now have chord modes. Check this out. We can go into notes. Going, going back to chords. We also have the option for open chords now. And going to the key section, you'll now see that you have more than just the basic key signatures. You have the major and minor scales right here. Now, I think it would be amazing if you, Jim, had more advanced timing options. But to be honest, this is really, really good. We now also have a built-in manual on what everything does, so you can see everything. And we also have this really cool force and dampen control, so check this out. And these are just using your jog wheels on your MIDI keyboard. So you can actually automate this to give you even more dynamic playing. We also have an instrument mode. This will allow us to utilize this synthesizer as an actual synthesizer. If you like the tones that you're getting and you want to just play into it, you totally can. Now, going up here back into the main control section, you'll notice that some things are a little bit different. We've lost the ability to choose between a bunch of different tonal options by just having four. We have soft, tame, real, and hard, and we no longer have the blends. We have a mic and a pickup knob, which is continuous, and we now have five different mixes, as well as a variable stereo width control, focus, air, two effects sections, variance, and tuning. Let's start off with tuning. Tuning is gonna give you the option to move the pitch up and down by up to three semitones. This means that you have a huge option control of, of how high or low you want this to be pitched up. The blend control, let's listen to that. That actually sounds like a pretty good pickup. If I had an impulse response, I could totally make this sound like any guitar I wanted. Now, as far as character control, let's take a listen to this.
to my ears, what I'm hearing is a difference between the stereo image and the microphones used and the processing used. It's really interesting because you're getting subtle things between like something like real and tame, but soft and hard are very aggressively differently, but they're not bad sounding. Mix Controls gives you even more options from subtle, neutral, open, distinct, and glitz. The air control is a super, super, super subtle air this time. Focus acts more like a tilt shelf EQ now. And then we have stereo width. Before we had a doubler, right? But now we can have it off, which is mono, and slowly bring it up and increase or decrease the amount of stereo with it we want. This combined with the variance control, which will add a degree of dynamics to the playing, will allow you to have variations between the up and down or the hard and soft playing. Cool. The stomp box section has replaced one of the effects that we originally had, and now we're able to choose from a ton of different things, from formant shifters, to synthesizers, phasers, tape machines. And then we have Finisher. This is basically a multi-effects unit that gives you a lot of options from bass impact to acoustic pop tones to phaser delays and all these different types of ambient and effects options. And this is a great way of actually getting something like a space reverb. Some filters. And there you have it, that's just me clicking through phrases, and as you can hear, it is significantly different. It is significantly better. Everything just sounds a lot more natural. There's no type of artifacting. It is fantastic. And to be honest, this is making me really like Amber 2. I really like it. I can see myself using this a lot. Uh, it's not like Amber 1 where it was more like a tonal issue. Where I didn't like the tones I was getting, but I liked some of the phrases. This is fantastic. It sounds way better. It uh, has a lot more style phrases that I like. And I'm able to drag and drop. So overall, I'm really liking this update. I think it's fantastic. And it really is up there, like the release of, you know, their Virtual Pianist series, which is amazing. I still need to do the video on their newest Virtual Pianist uh, piano library. It's fantastic. Just I'm letting you know it's really good. And then I still think that Silk is amazing. I really cannot wait for Virtual Guitars 2 Silk to come out. But until then, Amber 2 has really, really surprised me. It's kind of like when I tried U-Synth, I was like, this is an amazing synthesizer. So this is an amazing acoustic steel string guitar loop library as well as a virtual instrument. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. And I definitely think you should check it out because remember that UGEM does 30-day demos where the only thing that'll happen is it'll ask you when you reopen your session, hey, do you still want to demo this out? You say yes, and you're able to use it completely undeterred. It is completely just, it just works and it sounds fantastic. And the price on this thing is actually pretty affordable. So if you're looking for a steel string acoustic guitar uh, synthesizer that has loops built into it, I would really recommend check out Amber 2. Anyway, this is Jeremy Taylor from The Daw. I will see you guys next time. Bye.